Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. How Bond Market Pricing Works. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia, How Bond Market Pricing Works, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Barry Nelson, updated August 31st, 2020. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping them in mind. We're now looking at how bond market pricing works. We're going to be using a baseball analogy here. So the U.S. bond market is like baseball. You have to understand and appreciate the rules and strategies or else it will seem boring. So you might think investing in general is boring and even more so investing in bonds. But no, you just don't understand the rules. It's as exciting as baseball, which is also not the most action packed area. But if you like the stats and whatnot, which, of course, I do, then it becomes quite exciting pops to life and it's going to be a great a great analogy here so it's also like baseball in that its rules and pricing conventions have evolved and can seem esoteric at times so you got to think about the changes that have happened with relation to the rules over time as you're doing kind of comparisons to seeing what's going on so in the official major league rule book it takes more than 3,600 words to cover the rules of what the pitcher can and cannot do. So you might think the pitcher just sits up there and throws the ball to the hitter, but no, there's a whole lot of stuff that the pitcher can and cannot do up there, and you gotta, you gotta be aware of that. So in this article, we're going to cover bond market pricing conventions in less than 1,800 words. Bond market classifications are briefly discussed followed by yield calculations, pricing benchmarks, and pricing spreads. Basic knowledge of these pricing conventions will make the bond market seem as exciting as the best World Series baseball game. Uh, and so that's super exciting, of course, the big baseball game, the World Series game here. Everybody, everybody's excited for that. So bond market classification. The bond market consists of a great number of issuers and types of securities. To talk about each specific type might fill an entire textbook. Therefore, for the purpose of discussing how various bond market pricing conventions work, we make the following major bond classifications. So we got the U.S. Treasuries, a bond issued by the United States Department of the Treasury. We've got the corporate bonds, bonds issued by corporations that carry an investment grade rating, high yield bonds, bonds with ratings below investment grade, also known as non-investment grade bonds or junk bonds, Mortgage-backed securities, MBS, as the name implies, a bond collateralized by the cash flow of principal and interest payments from an underlying pool of single-family residential mortgages. We've got the asset-backed securities, ABS, a bond collateralized by the cash flow of an underlying pool of assets such as auto loans, credit card receivables, home equity loans, aircraft leases, etc. The list of assets that have been securitized uh, into ABSs is almost endless. Agency bonds, debt issued by government sponsored entities, GSEs, uh, including Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and federal home loan banks. Municipal bonds or munis, a bond issued by a state, city, or local government or its agencies. Collateralized debt obligations, CDOs, a type of asset backed security backed by any one or several other ABS, MBS bonds or loans. A bond's expected return. Yield is the measure used most frequently to estimate or determine an a bond's expected return. Yield is also used as a relative value measure between bonds. So when we're trying to compare bonds, we're trying to figure the yield as a way or a method to do that comparison. There are two primary yield measures that must be understood to understand how different bond market pricing conventions work, yield to maturity and spot rates. A yield to maturity calculation is made by determining the interest rate discount rate that will make the sum of the bond's cash flows plus accrued interest equal to the current price of the bond. So we might do some of these in our example problem to get a better grasp of it. Uh, but note, when you're thinking of the bond, you can think of it as future cash flows, right? We've got future cash flows that we know what they're going to be because they're in the term of the bond, typically being something like the semi-annual 
interest payments, meaning a stream of payments, like an annuity type of payments going forward. And then we've got the value that we're gonna receive at the maturity, which is you think of like the face about, kind of like the return of the principal. We can use our present value factors then to take that future cash flows and discount it to figure out uh, the discount rate at which it matches basically the price of the bond one way that we would basically value the, the bond one way that the market would then figure the price. So this calculation has two important assumptions. First, that the bond will be held until maturity. And second, that the bond's cash flows can be reinvested at the yield to maturity. A spot rate calculation is made by determining the interest rate discount rate that makes the present value of a zero coupon bond equal to its price. A series of spot rates must be calculated to price a coupon uh, paying bond each cash flow must be discounted using the appropriate spot rate such that the sum of the present value of each cash flows equals the price. So let's look at that one more time. A spot rate calculation is made by determining the interest rate discount rate that makes the present value of a zero coupon bond. That would be a bond that doesn't have the interest rate, but basically you buy it at a discount and at the end uh, typ typically you buy it at a discount and at the end you'd get the face amount and so the interest is kind of built in to the amount that you're going to receive at the end a zero coupon bond equal to its price so a series of spot rates must be calculated to price a coupon paying bond so when you look at a coupon paying pond one that's going to have those interest payments if you're going to look at the spot rate then you're going to have to multiple spot rates because now you've got these multiple spots or points in time uh, in the future for the fuel those future cash flows each cash flow must be discounted using the appropriate spot rate such that the sum of the present values of each cash flow equals the price. So as we discussed below, spot rates are most often used as a building block to relative value comparisons for certain types of bonds. Benchmarks for bonds. Most bonds are priced relative to a benchmark. This is where bond market pricing gets a little tricky. Different bond classifications, as we have uh, defined them above, use different pricing benchmarks. Some of the most common pricing benchmarks are on the run U.S. Treasuries, the most current series. Many bonds are priced relative to a specific treasury bond. For example, the on the run 10-year treasury might be used as the pricing benchmark for a 10-year corporate bond issue. So note, when you're looking at the government bonds, we can use them kind of as the benchmark. One of the reasons you might do so is because they don't have that default risk that is there with the corporate bonds because you would think that the government, the US government would be able to service their debt so they can be used as a good kind of comparison tool for the benchmarking. When the maturity of a bond cannot be known with exactness because of call or put features, the bond is frequently priced to a benchmark curve. This is because the estimated maturity of the callable or puttable bond most likely does not coincide exactly with the maturity of a specific treasury. Benchmark pricing curves are constructed using the yields of underlying securities with maturities from three months to 30 years. Several different benchmark interest rates or securities are used to construct benchmark pricing curves because there are gaps in the maturities of securities used to construct a curve. Yields must be interloped between the observable yields. For example, one of the most commonly used benchmark curves is the on-the-run U.S. Treasury curve, which is constructed using the most recently issued U.S. Treasury bonds, notes, and bills. Because securities are only issued by the Treasury, Treasury with 3-month, 6-month, 2-year, 3-year, 5-year, 10-year, and 30-year maturities, the yield of theoretical bonds with maturities that lay between those maturities must be interloping. So these treasury curve uh, is known as the interloping yield curve or the I curve by bond market participants. Other popular bond benchmarking pricing curves. 
you got the spot rate treasury curve, a curve constructed using the, the theoretical spot rates of U.S. treasuries. You got the swap curve, a curve constructed using the fixed interest rate side of interest rate swaps. We've got the euro dollar curve, a curve constructed using the interest rates derived from euro dollar feature pricing. We've got the agency curve, a curve constructed using the yields of non-callable fixed rate agency debt yield spreads for bonds a bond's yield relative to the yield of its benchmark is called a spread so now we're comparing it basically to the benchmark and we're looking at you know the difference the spread so a bond's yield relative to the yield of its benchmark is called a spread the spread is used with a pricing mechanism and as relative value comparison between bonds. For example, a trader might say that a certain corporation bond is trading at a spread of 75 basis points above the 10 year treasury. This means that the yield to maturity of the bond is 0.75% greater than the yield to maturity of the on the run 10 year treasury. So we're comparing it there, looking at the spread. Notably, if a different corporation bond with the same credit rating, outlook, outlook and duration were trading at a spread of 90 basis points on a relative value basis, the second bond would be a, a better buy. So you, we're using these benchmarks, of course, to do these kind of comparisons uh, within the market to value the bonds and the returns of the bonds, taking into consideration the risks related related to the bonds and trying to tie them to the benchmark so there are different types of spread calculations used for the different pricing benchmarks the four primary yield spread calculations are one nominal yield spread the difference in the yield to maturity of a bond and the yield to maturity of its benchmark you got the number two zero volatility spread the z spread the constant spread that when added to the yield at each point on the spot rate treasury curve where a bond's cash flow is received will make the price of a security equal to the present value of uh, its cash flows. Number three, option adjusted spread, the OAS. And OAS is used to evaluate bonds with embedded options such as a callable bond or portable bond, which we've seen in prior presentations. It is the constant spread that when added to the yield at each point on a spot rate curve, usually the U.S. Treasury spot rate curve, where a bond's cash flow is received, will make the price of the bond equal to the present value of its cash flow however to calculate the oas the spot rate curve is given multiple interest rate pass uh, in other words many different spot rate curves are calculated and the different interest rate pass are averaged and oas accounts for interest rate volatility and the probability of the prepayment of principal of the bond we got number four discount margin the dm bonds with variable interest rates are usually priced close to their par value this is because the interest rate coupon on a variable rate bond adjusts to current interest rate uh, rates based on changes in the bond's reference rate the dm discount margin is the spread that when added to the bond's current uh, refer reference rate will equate the bond's cash flows to its current price so types of bonds and their benchmark spread calculations we got the high yield bonds high yield these are like the junk bonds high yield bonds are usually priced at a nominal yield spread to a specific on the run u.s treasury bond however sometimes when the credit ratings and outlook of a high yield bond deteriorates the bond will start to trade at an actual dollar price for example such a bond trades at 75 dollars and 87.5 cents as opposed to 500 basis points over the 10-year treasury uh, corporate bonds a corporate bond is usually priced at a nominal yield spread to a specific on the run u.s a treasury bond that matches its maturity for example 10-year corporate bonds are priced to the 10-year treasury so types of bonds and their benchmark spread calculation continued we got the mortgage-backed securities the mbs there are many different types of mbs mortgage-backed securities many of them trade on a nominal yield spread 
at their weighted average life to the U.S. Treasury I-curve. Some adjusted rate MBS mortgage-backed securities trade at a DM. Others trade at Z spread. Some CMOs trade at a nominal yield spread to a specific treasury. For example, a 10-year planned amortization class bond might trade at a nominal spread, nominal yield spread, to the on-the-run 10-year treasury. A Z bond might trade at a nominal yield spread to the on-the-run 30-year treasury. Because MBS have embedded call options borrowers have the free option of uh, prepaying their mortgages they are frequently evaluated using an oas so we got the asset backed securities the abs abs frequently trade at a nominal yield spread at their weighted average life to the swap curve types of bonds and their benchmark spread calculations we got the agencies agencies frequently trade at nominal yield spread to a specific treasury such as the on the run 10-year treasury we've got the callable agencies are sometimes uh, eval evaluated based on an oas where the spot rate curves are derived from the yields on non-callable agencies you got the municipal bonds because of the tax advantages of the municipal bonds usually not taxable their yields are, are not as highly correlated with U.S. Treasury yields as other bonds. Therefore, the munis frequently trade on an outright yield to maturity or even a dollar price. However, munis yield as a ratio to the benchmark Treasury yield is sometimes used as a relative value measure. We've got the collateralized debt obligations, the CDOs, like the MBS and ABS that frequently back OD cdos there are many different pricing benchmarks and yield measures used to price cdos the euro dollar curve is sometimes used as a benchmark discount margins are used on floating rate uh, tranches o oas calculations are made for relative value analysis so what's the bottom line bond market pricing conventions are a little bit tricky but like baseball rules understanding the basic move uh, basic basics remove some of the ambiguity and may even make it enjoyable so bond pricing is really just a matter of identifying a pricing benchmark determining a spread and understanding the difference between two basic yield calculations yield to maturity and spot rates with that knowledge understanding how various types of bonds and price are priced shouldn't be intimidating